Uh, good evening. It's a great pleasure to be able to um, welcome uh, Walid Rad and uh, Thiaste Gates to um, the GSD, I should say back to the GSD. Um, I think many of you know that uh, in the school over the past few years, we've um, spent a lot of time uh, thinking about the relationship of uh, the arts to the kinds of things that happen in the school, the future of our cities, um, and the way in which the arts can really interact with um, other disciplines. And, and in fact, the, the MDES program in art design and public domain is a, is a manifestation of those interests. I can't really think of two better individuals to represent uh, the emphasis and focus on this uh, topic of uh, how artists are also engaging with places, engaging with specific localities uh, that become part and parcel uh, of their practice. Both uh, Walid and Tiaster in very different ways. Walid, a lot of the time working in Beirut, um, but I guess tonight not, not so much in terms of his presentation. And Tiaster, uh, in terms of Chicago, have really uh, made those places um, the focus of uh, a body of work uh, that is um, dealing with questions of um, places that have been left behind, people that have been left behind, but at the same time, issues of the politics of those localities and the memories associated with those places become very much part and parcel of the way in which they practice in many ways quite differently, uh, but at the same time, I think the work um, has an incredible um, um, sympathy, I would say, in terms of the, the relationships between the two works. Uh, Walid is, uh, lives in uh, New York and uh, also teaches in the, um, in the um, art department uh, at the Cooper Union. And for many years, he has been involved with the work of the Atlas Group, which he created, a 15-year project between 1989 and 2004 about the contemporary history of Lebanon. Um, he has used many of these projects to also um, develop publications uh, such as The Truth Will Be Known When the Last Witness is Dead, My Neck is Thinner Than a Hair, uh, let's be honest, the weather helped and scratching on things I could disavow. Um, and of course his work um, has been um, exhibited uh, in many, many places uh, around the world. So I'll try to be very brief uh, with those, um, many of the awards and, and prizes. Uh, similarly, Siaster, who we can claim as one of our own uh, because he was a Loeb Fellow uh, here at the GSD not so long ago, um, has also gone on and really combined his interest in um, a variety of art practices um, together with his, um, his love and uh, knowledge of, of cities uh, to really make an enormous contribution in Chicago, but now, um, especially uh, in the last four or five years, has made an, an incredible impact uh, around the world with his projects, residencies, and uh, many, many awards. Uh, Teaste is also now the Director of Arts and Public Life Initiative at the University of uh, Chicago. Uh, the format for tonight is going to be fairly simple. We're going to start with uh, a brief intervention of a video project by Theaster. Uh, that will be uh, only a few minutes. Then Walid will speak for about 20 minutes or so, and then Theaster will speak, and then hopefully there'll be time, if they keep to their time, uh, to, uh, and to have a, and, and me, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be very, uh, very brief. Uh, I, I could talk about you guys for a long time, but I'll be, no, so then we want to really open this up and have you um, participate. I also, of course, want Theaster and Walid to talk about each other's work. I can't tell you how excited I am that they're both here, and I'm very much looking forward to their presentation and your participation. So, 
please welcome Theaster first, and then after that, Walid Rad. Theaster, if you're gonna live on that block, you need to get yourself a pit bull. Well, what I think you should do, Theaster, is you should, uh, you should uh, go to the bank and uh, you know talk to the bank president. You know you got a you got a good relationship with the mayor, and uh, you should tell that bank president that uh, that you don't want just that corner building. You want to get all those buildings because you know those the those people over there, they don't, they don't really care about where they live. And, uh, you know, I mean, they're just going to really mess up your investment. If you just get the one, you know, that's what they say. You know, artists move in, you know, artists move in, you know, artists move in, and then development follows. You know, and you don't want to be on the, on, the, on the back end of that, Theaster. You want to you you monetize this opportunity. Um, that you've created for yourself. You're a world-renowned artist. You hang out with people by the likes of Waleed Rod. <laughs> you don't want to get left behind when the development, the, 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 the bulldozer sweeps. The Astor, you know, this is the time when you're supposed to, to, to really, you know, you know, use that Harvard education that you got. You know, think about those deals that you could make. Theaster. This is quite simple. We could uh, enter into a memorandum of understanding where your not-for-profit uh, partners with my development corporation. We approach the Chicago Housing Authority. Um, we let them know that we're going to do f the first uh, mixed income cultural space with uh, 32 units for artists of all kinds from all economic levels and that we're going to build in um, a developer uh, ownership with your not-for-profit. You'll be 35% owner in this investment, which means that when the deal is done, uh, your not-for-profit rebuild foundation will receive $425,000 of, of the developer fee, and then you will have joint and shared interest in the redevelopment activity that happens in and around your neighborhood. It'll be a coup for developers. It'll be a coup for the arts. Um, you'll be a hero among your, your colleagues. The Aster. You spend more time talking about development than you do about artistic practice. And if I didn't know better, I would think that you were just more interested in making the deal than making work. Then I'm not clear anymore about your aspiration, but it's because of this lack of clarity around your aspiration, around where art fits in your center, that we, um, we can't give you this art prize. Theaster, on behalf of Beep, um, you know, while your work is deserving of, of our artistic prize, um, um, one of the strong criteria that we have is a criteria of need. And, uh, and it seems as if the art world has put you in a condition such that you don't really need anything anymore. Uh, and therefore, uh, we too apologize for, for not giving you the art prize. T. Man, if all these people gonna come from around the country, around the world to see your work, you could at least get on stage and when you get on stage, you could say thank you for coming. You know, I, I just don't understand this contemporary art stuff. You know, like, you ain't got to be disrespectful. I mean, these are good white people that came. And you get up there and you call them crackers and you talk about Jews and you call black people niggas. T, not everybody know that when you say that stuff, you joking. <laughs> On behalf of the city of Chicago, we thank you. Theaster for your contribution to changing and transforming 
the urban landscape, for being a witness and a catalyst for the great reinvestment that we're doing here in Chicago. And I will leverage any day the role that the arts can play in the significant redevelopment of our neighborhoods that black people and white people, Jews and Gentiles, will one day live next to each other again because of this great work. And we'd like for you all to join us in commemorating this day, this street, Theaster Gates Street. that I also have some fears. Um, fears that play out um, around space. That there's a way in which when I go home sometimes, the buildings don't look like they've shrunk. The buildings come artworks don't seem small. They seem like they've um, grown by three that when I look at the abandoned building or the formerly abandoned building, um, I can't help but think about the light and gas bill. When I think about the, the transformation that's possible, I used to feel like I was a champion of this kind of transformation. I used to champion the idea of one building at a time can have huge and transformative consequences. I talked like my mayor. And I found myself wanting to find a device, figure out a gimmick, use a tactic that could make this little place on the south side of Chicago bigger. One tactic was, well, if I, if I connect this little place these little events with big events, big events like events that happen in Paris and in Kassel and events, art events, that if I could amplify Dorchester in Kassel, that the world might think better of me. They might think better of this place and those people who live around me in this place. That it's actually, a, it's age old, this kind of post-colonial politic of constantly proving that the place that you're from is a place that's important. But you're saying it to everybody but the people you live around, the other people who should know that it's important. So it makes a lot of sense when, when Waleed talks about not being able to show a work in Lebanon it makes a lot of work, a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons. That I've grown to fear this work of art that I've made. That the, the, the success opportunities, success. The fact that people can, can, can get confused between the Dorchester in Boston and the Dorchester of Chicago. That people would imagine a neighborhood uh, in a block being the same thing that people in other countries might imagine uh, Dorchester as a region of the state of Illinois. These nine buildings, these 50 apartment units, these minor investments. And then I think I've duped them all. That in fact, maybe they are miniatures, maybe they are uh, infinitely small gestures that I come to the GSD and I realize that it is not a city that I've rebuilt. But I have been able to kind of shift psychically how we imagine a particular place. That 150 artists would want to come to Chicago, lock themselves up for a couple days, knowing not at all what they might do. 
that another hundred artists would tell all of their white friends that they are intentionally not going because they don't need a black artist retreat. That I had a great hall. I could feel like a chick. I could have like the juiciest salmon of any gala and it not have to be a gala. That shoe shine stands paid for that 28,000 square feet. Tar paintings paid for that 28,000 square feet. That salmon was paid for with fire hoses that came from Oakland, California. That people really want to believe are the signs of the civil rights, that people want that sign because if they have that sign, then they never have to fucking go to Dorchester. That if they can buy their way out of a certain kind of uh, urban guilt, they do it. And they can send that check and their, their artist liaison can call White Cube and buy that thing. And you never have to know the thing that the sign is signifying. And I'm exploiting. I lick my pieces before they leave. I thank them in advance for the work that they'll do. I hope that it'll be a calling card so that I can meet more and more beautiful princesses, princesses from places that no longer need them. I can meet princes who wish they were like 10 pounds lighter, a tad shade darker, but only when they want to be. Thank you very much.